getting your own story, I was very shocked um, by this, profoundly shocked. And that's why my first question to you, Jury, was how much did you know about me before <laughs> you wrote this? Uh, it was it caught me off guard, and it was quite a fun adventure. I'm really loving it, and I'll be watching it again. I'm so excited about my new freedom and my new liberty and all the affirmations that you spoke to my life. I'm usually the encouraging person in people's lives. This has been a huge encouragement to me, Jerry. You clearly have a gift of hearing from the Lord, and I affirm that. And I'm, uh, I can tell everybody that you and I have not exchanged any biographical information about each other before this, which uh, affirms a really super unique gifting that you have. And I applaud you, and I'm excited about seeing it blossom further. It's a life-altering, encouraging word that will change your life forever if you apply it. And it's totally worth the investment um, to do it. Don't hesitate. Don't wonder, is this right for me? Is this the right time for me? Just do it now because you need, you need the encouragement now. Don't wait. And as far as the the podcast goes and get, becoming a legend, I, I encourage everyone to really just pray and talk to God about it. And if you feel le- led to get or to sign up to get one, I, I, I strongly encourage it because not only did this edify what God is doing in my life, But it also gave me the ability to share what he's done in my life with you guys. Mm -hmm. So that if it needed to, if any of you needed to hear specific things that were said by either the story or by the guest, that it really allows people to hear that and really Mm -hmm. allows them to get your story on top of the story that you wrote with us. Brilliantly said. Thank you, John. I would just recommend it to get a story because it's the most unique thing I've heard of, but it is so anointed. So I would do it for two reasons. One is because it's anointed and you're hearing from God and that in itself is a beautiful thing to have God use somebody else to tell you something about yourself. So I would do it for that. And I also would do it to spur another person's passion to help sew into what you're doing because we need people like you who are pioneers, who are boundary pushers, who (laughs) want to pursue something not everyone's pursuing. Um, We want to give you encouragement and we want to love on you. And that's one way we can do it since we don't get to see you in person. Cool, Um, thank you. Yeah, thank so you I very much. Reason. This was such an amazing experience, honestly, and I am so grateful that literally the Lord has given you this gift because it really is powerful and impacting for me tonight. And I can, and I'm sure by just me hearing you just read my story to me, it was so touching and it's what I needed to hear for this week. And I know a lot of people felt that way if they've come on your show. So I definitely thank you so much for your work and definitely just keep staying (laughs) staying in this field it is a true true blessing thank you wow man Lacey thank you for saying that And hello and welcome to the Legends of the Wind podcast. I'm Jury Shank. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Tonight's going to be awesome. It's going to be a powerful night of storytelling and revelation. So thank you so much for being part of the program and for uh, supporting our show. Uh, Now, for those of you who are new to this uh, program, what I do here is what we call prophetic storytelling. Now, This is not a church setting. This is not a church sort of thing. This is a merging of the prophetic gifting with the creative arts. And so if you look at behind me, there's a painting there that my wife Alicia did. And it's a prophetic painting for one of the stories I wrote. And so what we want to do is to not literally tell you who you are and your identity and destiny. We want to tell you a story that gives 
hidden treasures that reveals to you revelation and the aha moments about who you are. It's about telling you who you are through the story for you to discover those things and your destiny. So it's a part of a creative experience. Now, one of the things we like to talk about is becoming a legend. Now, a legend doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, look, I'm famous, I got a story. Legends serve a function. They're on a map. If you look over a map and you say, what does this mean? The legends tell you where things are and what things are on a map. That way you can look at the map and go, okay, this is the location of this, and this is where I am, and this is where I'm going. And that's what we do with the prophetic stories, is these are legends, where you get to know the path, or at least be pointed in the direction that you're going. That way you can finish your story well. So thank you so much for joining us. Now, if you haven't done so already, would you please consider subscribing to our channel and hitting the like button and also hitting the notification bell button so that you know when we're going to be having more broadcasts. Thank you very much for liking this already for those of you who have. And also in the chat, if you're there, and um, we welcome you to be part of the show. We'd love to have your comments and your questions. And we'll be bringing you on board, of course, during our talk after the story. Now, our story tonight is called Time Flies. And Mike Gates is our guest. Now, I'm going to ask him to come on the show right now. So, Mike, here you go. Welcome to the show, Mike. Thanks for joining us. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing? Cool, man. Well, thanks for being part of the program. Uh, Bird's Eye yes. 307 says, what's up, Jerry? Hey, man, good to see you. Uh, so, Mike, thank you very much for being my guest. Now, just a quick rundown. Have I ever met you prior to tonight? No. Okay, cool. And have you ever sent me any information about your life? Nothing. Great, cool. So what I do here is I write stories blind for people like Mike, who's my guest. Now, Mike, uh, have you ever seen our shows before? And how did you come about us? And tell us a little bit about yourself and introduce yourself to the audience. Yes. Yeah, so the the f first one I I saw was uh, my pastor, uh, Dr. Nick Goff. And uh, I was just kind of blown away with his story. Uh, I thought it was a really neat way of telling things. And I, and I kind of know his story. So when I watched it, I just thought it was just totally amazing. So it, it's, uh, that was pretty neat. Cool. And uh, so uh, I'm originally from Virginia beach and I've been living down here in North Carolina for Mm, 20 over 25 years and uh, I'm a welder fabricator by uh, that's my my trade so uh, and that's pretty much it <laughs> that's fine I'm sure you've gotten a lot of work done and I, with your hands and with about using your mind to create uh, physical things. That's a huge and very vital, important skill set to have. So thank you. Cool. Yeah. Well, um, so I want to tell you about how to receive a prophetic story for you and the audience. Um, first of all, the stories are meant to be understood symbolically, not literally. So while the story may have a sense of realism in, in a certain way, we're meant to unpack it symbolically, kind of like dream interpretation. And um, so after the story is done, uh, it's our time of conversation where we look for the interpretation of your story with the goal of uh, getting the application. Like, what's the takeaway? How do you apply it to your life? And then um, I want you to know that you have power, Mike. Um, you have a choice. You can say, yes, I do receive this prophetic story or no, I do not. And you may need time to process it. You may even need to know it might be for the future, potentially. And so that's kind of like how to navigate it for you. So there may be things in there that make sense to you and are relevant today. There may be things that are speaking to you in the future. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. Well, we don't want to wait any longer. So are you ready for your story? Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> awesome, Mike. Cool. Well, here we go. Time flies. Mike wasn't the kind of man who loves cliches, but he likes to have fun. The work in his heart over the past season has been excruciating, 
and he longed for the freedom to allow him to pursue the dreams and desires of his heart. This past winter season was hard and did not allow this, especially with the handiwork needed at home and the rebuilding of relationships. The cold shoulders and the cold snow were no fun for Mike, but through the heartache, he became a greater, better man. The snow was deep as Mike shoveled the sidewalk in front of his house. It was cold and he had a bitter heart. The beauty of the white landscape in front of him could not change his perspective on his situation. All he saw was the labor, the hard labor of digging in the white dirt, as he called it. The path he created was deep and his heart was racing as his muscles ached. With pitch after pitch, he made his way from the house to the street and then down along the sidewalk and up the driveway. Mike thought to himself, will all this effort be worth it? Times like these made Mike feel alone. He used to welcome this solitude, but today it was a prison for him. But the season was changing and spring was just at Mike's doorstep. One of the signs of the change of the season was the messenger birds that would come to his neighborhood. The ravens and the crows would show up and look around for food and caw their hearts out. One raven came and perched on the tree branch that hung above the driveway. He cawed and cawed as he watched Mike do all the hard work. This sound annoyed Mike. He didn't understand the message that the bird sent to him. All of the encouragement seemed to be a nagging message to his heart. Mike wanted to be left alone, but the messenger raven didn't let up. Ka, 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 called out the raven. Annoyed, Mike looked up and replied to the blackbird, Go away! I am tired of your noise. The blackbird cawed another time. Mike, in his frustration, made a snowball and threw it at the bird, but missed. Mike pointed to the raven and made a threat. If you don't stop bothering me, I will eat you for dinner. The raven, to Mike's surprise, called out a laugh and said, you think I'm just a bird, do you? His spoken English startled Mike so much that he lost his footing on the ice and fell backward. Mike cursed and said, What did you say? The raven flew down from the branch and landed on the clear sidewalk about eight feet from Michael. The annoyed, frustrated, and heartbroken man gathered himself and stood on his feet looking at the bird. Mike felt pain all over his body. The raven cawed. Mike swiped some snow at it and said, I thought so. You said nothing. Mike turned around, grabbed his shovel, and grumbled, Let me finish my work. The raven said, You can't finish your work until you learn to listen. Mike turned around in a flash and held up his shovel in front of him like a shield. He said, You did say something to me. He shivered in fear now, and not just from the cold. The bird cocked his head and stood still. Mike slowed, stepped forward, and lowered himself down and asked, What do I need to listen to you for? The black bird fluttered his wings and cleaned off some snowflakes. Mike, you've had a hard season. Times have been tough. Money has been short. And your temper is even shorter. The anger you feel is the frustration of not getting things done. These are important things, yes, but there is even more. The raven's explanation alarmed Mike, for not only was he talking to a bird, but this bird spoke the truth away about his situation. How did you know this about me? asked Mike. The raven hopped toward the man and held out one wing. He said, I see all of your comings and goings. I see what goes on in your house and all the pain. I see the tears in your heart, though they may never fall down your cheeks. Have you ever tried to eat a ticking alarm clock? Mike replied, eat a ticking alarm clock? The raven replied, it can be very time consuming. The raven snickered. Mark snarled in anger. I'm not one for jokes these days. The raven hopped closer. All of your worries have consumed your mind and your strength. You have lost the joy in your heart. Look in the window of your house. Mike turned and saw inside his wife, who was busy vacuuming the floor in their living room. The raven said, Your joy will return in this next season. The ice and snow will melt away, and spring will reveal the abundance of fruit in your life. We know your grief, Mike. Today a messenger has come. 
My name is Keros, the raven of time. When you find the joy in your heart and the passions come alive again, your sense of time will just fly, fly, fly by. You will have so much fun, you will not even know the years will zip past your heart's imagination. But I have no imagination, said Mike. I have lost my dream. You have been asleep, Mike, but today is your wake-up call. Close your eyes and look into your future. Tell me what you see. Mike gave the raven a look of suspicion and asked, You want me to listen to my heart? Go ahead. There is nothing to fear, replied the raven. Mike sighed, stood up straight and closed his eyes and breathed. For a moment there was silence. And Mike looked with the eyes of his heart. The raven could see Mike's rapid eye movements underneath his eyelids. More time passed. Mike breathed deeper and deeper as great emotions filled his soul. Hot breath poured out of his mouth in the frozen temperatures. Suddenly, Mike put his hand to his mouth in shock. Small tears formed around his eyes and created small ice crystals. He opened his eyes. This can't be true, whispered Mike. He paused, gathered his senses. What you saw is more real than this snow and ice surroundings. What you saw is more real than this house. What you saw is your future, tried and true. Mike leaned on his shovel and was in deep thought. The raven said, What you needed was a new perspective. The dreams inside your heart are reality. Today, your dreams begin to come true. For now, I must go. You know the saying, time flies. Mike interrupted and said, But wait, I have more questions. But the raven was gone in a flutter of feathers. Mike looked around and saw the raven off in the distance. He took a deep breath and sighed, returning to his snow shoveling. This time he had more energy and even some joy. The encounter with the raven filled Mike's mind with awe and wonder. But more so, the visions he saw in his heart just now filled him with hope. Mike finished the work of his season and became a new man. He went into his house and shared hot cocoa with his wife. Together they made their plans with a joyful agreement and soon entered into their dreams. Forgiveness, repentance, and love brought to their home a new foundation to never ever shake again. Inceptio. So That was awful. <laughs> great. Good. So I like to help you with this transition. Uh, as you know, you've probably seen with Dr. Nick and other shows, it's like drinking from a fire hose and it's get emotional sometimes. Inceptio, what does Inceptio mean? So you go to a movie, you read, get a novel from a bookstore, library, and at the end, when you finish the story, it says the end. Mm -hmm. Not here. What I do is I help give you a story that gives you a sense of your identity and destiny and I set you, this is where you are so you can finish your story and go forward. Inceptio is Latin for the beginning. So that's why you have a future and there's a good thing coming to you and with your co-creating, you can finish your story. Yeah. So, so how are you doing, man? How are you feeling? Uh, I'm blown away with that. That was uh, uh, amazingly spot on. Okay. So it's uh, amazing, really spot on. How so? Uh, uh, I have been going through a season that just seems like it just never seems to end, and it's just been just a dredge. It's just been really a rough, very rough season with a lot of questions in my own mind about a lot of stuff. And, uh, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I'm just a little blown. I'm just a little blown away. Cause that was like really on point. I mean, just, Oh, good. Wow. Um, I could, I could see myself shoveling the snow and yelling at the Raven. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, good. just really, it's just, wow. Well, that's <laughs> good. Well, uh, we have a comment from your wife, Rachel, 
She goes, okay. amazing, spot on for you, Mike. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, so I have a, a friend of mine. I don't know if he's still here in, in the guest, but uh, his name's Birdseye307. And my hometown mm -hmm. here in Wyoming, I didn't tell you where I live. I live in Wyoming. We have a problem with turkeys and chickens and things like that. And so oh, wow. when, we, when we have the seasons change here, uh, the ravens and the crows show up. And it, you know it's the time. So mm -hmm. I did draw your story from my own personal experience here in Wyoming. But I also, I just... You know, like I said, I didn't ever meet you before, and I, I wanted to see your story. And for you to encourage me, uh, that is spot on, and for Rachel to say the same, I am so thankful for that for you. Now, yeah, I'm just I'm blown away with that one. That one was cool. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. So, um, do your best, but let's unpack it for you. Like, what are okay. uh, so what are some more things in your story that are speaking to you? Um, like the money struggle that, mm. that's been, that's been, a uh, uh, that's been a big thing. Um, just, uh, always feeling like I'm getting ready to turn that corner and it just, something knocks me back and it just never, never quite comes to fruition. And, um, uh, and, uh, in the snow that i'm not a big fan of snow at all yeah and and to be shoveling snow would be like a, a nightmare for me <laughs> not really a joyous time and uh and that it's kind of like a sign of the season i'm in mm -hmm. uh, that i've been in for a long time mm -hmm. uh, uh i haven't had a whole lot of joy for a long time uh most people around me would say yeah he's pretty uh angry i guess yeah but um um and, and another thing i wrote down was about you, you talked about imagination and that's something that i've spoke to my wife multiple times you know i always feel like i lack imagination um i've always wanted to try to create stuff Mm -hmm. And I have a, I have a skill and I want to be able to use that skill to create things, mm -hmm. but I lack the imagination to create certain things that are different from what's already there mm -hmm. that other people have already created. Right. Um, right. So well, that's, that's okay. some of the things that I wrote down that I was, that, that was just kind of like, Whoa, <laughs> that's good. Well, let me, let me encourage you. So here's the deal. Um, this story is your story. This is a gift to you from the library of heaven. And while we're in the middle of our story, like our second act, for example, sometimes we don't know the next chapters. You have been given a privilege of being grounded in where you are in your history. And now mm -hmm. you're being given a preview of your future. Now, if you notice in your story, Michael, you closed your eyes and you saw. But the story in me, I didn't know what you saw. And you say that you have trouble with imagination. Well, imagination can be in different facets, right? It can be you're a painter, you're an artist, you are a fashion designer, a, a sculptor. That's one way of doing it. But I would like to take a risk with you. Mm -hmm. I believe that your creative nature is best fitted in relationships. You understand what wisdom should look like in relationships. I'm actually starting to pick this up, okay? So okay. you you are, are a man of justice. Was, was that right? You are a man oh, of justice. Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. You're a man oh, yeah. of justice. And so you understand when things are going wrong and what things should look like when they're going right. You also understand that you can't control people and that you can't manipulate because you have been manipulated and controlled yourself. Mm. And so while you don't want to control and manipulate people, you have a vision for what is looking right. I believe that your story tonight is giving you a sense of a promise 
and a hope that the, what you see in your imagination is relationships. And that when you started tearing up and you went like this in shock, is, is that the dream inside your heart is reality. So without, you don't have to say anything in response to specifics, but let's just say that there are some relationships for you that are not well or not healthy, but let's see God give you the promise of making those restored and made healthy with wisdom. And that, I believe, is your gift in imagination. While you may think that you struggle with the arts, right, for example, mm -hmm. but I believe God's giving you wisdom in relationships. And that is where your imagination comes and into fulfillment. And so as you begin to heal, and as the melting of the season of the melting of the snow and the seasons changing, there's mm -hmm. gonna be a new warmth coming to you. Because you're gonna know heaven is backing you up in this transition time. You're going mm -hmm. into the future into a place of warmth, not bitterness, not mm -hmm. cold. And I think that um, if you were to reframe your frustration with the imagination. I grant you permission to think differently. You don't have to be an artist necessarily, like you think, oh, I have no imagination, but I give you permission to think differently in another genre of the imagination. Wow, that's a different way to think of it, yeah. Yeah, I, I, can, picture, I can picture some of the relationships that, I, that, that you're talking about that I need to uh put my focus on yeah and, and that wisdom yeah and like at the very Enjoy. last the very last sentence of your story uh it says forgiveness repentance and love brought to their home a new foundation to never ever shake again and mm. i would say that that sentence is not just like for you your wife only but like anybody anybody mm -hmm. in your life and so, so you know what a horse whisper is, right? Uh, I, I guess would it be like the, the, I guess they know how to train like a horse or something like that. Right. So a horse whisper is a term for someone who knows how to train a horse, but they're like masters at it. They're almost like they're magical or they're, uh, they, they can speak the language of the horse in such a way. There's such an intuition, a, a sense of connection with the horse as the horse is needing to be broken and changed or something. Mm -hmm. Let Keros, the raven of time, which is Holy Spirit, whisper into you the wisdom that you need for the relationships. Mm. Kairos and Kronos are both time, but they're different. Kronos is the sequence of time like a clock. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Kairos is a special um, appointed time. So when you're having the sense of imagination being breathed into you by relationships and, and uh, by the Holy Spirit, then there's a moment of time, timing, when you know when and how to speak and what to say and when not to. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? I believe, yes. I believe that the, the past hard, sheep, hard, bitter season is coming to an end for you because I've never met you before. We've never talked until 20, 15 minutes prior to this show. This is an evidence to you and to your family that this is for you as a promise from heaven because there's no way yeah. i could ever know this about you and so i want yeah. to see s support you that th there's a shifting come a melting away and and that that the the, the breath of the Keros raven of time <laughs> you know it's an interesting way of like the holy spirit even like in genesis as i was brooding over the waters the deep right yeah. I'm using yep. an unconventional label or language for you, but I'm still speaking uh, biblical truth, right? Mm -hmm. So, so now you have been granted freedom and prosperity, not just money, but relationships and family. Right. I know I'm kind of talking a lot right now, but I want to give you an opportunity here to, to hear what I had to say, but it's your turn. What do you think now? I'm just, 
uh, uh, you know, for, for a long time, I've, you know, told my wife, I felt like I was in a season of winter and it just doesn't seem to ever end. And it just, you know, and I'm just like waiting on spring and, uh, and, uh, I just, wow. And I can, I can see it cause you know, um, the winter to me represents bitterness and, and, uh, and I feel like I have some of that bitterness that's in me mm-hmm. and, um, of not a feeling like not being heard, I guess. Uh, yes. Uh, or what I, what I say doesn't seem to come across, uh, and I guess not knowing, not having the wisdom to be able to articulate exactly what I feel without it being, uh, construed as a fight, mm. I guess, uh, or, uh, feeling like it's, uh, something that, uh, threatening of feeling like a, a threatening anger. Mm-hmm towards other people right. um, in general and uh, just a frustration with, uh, I guess just the monotony, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah. I understand monotony. Do I ever? So I want to piggyback off what you just said. So when it comes to the bitterness and stuff, this is a really helpful, uh, simple book. This is a guy Mm -hmm. called Praying Medics. Uh, That's his pen name, Dave Hayes. Uh, You can get this on Amazon. You can get this on Amazon. This this is a really simple uh, but very profound way of having an encounter with God for purpose Mm -hmm. of healing. And so the story, see, this isn't just a story, right? Okay? Right. What I created for you from heaven is an encounter for you to experience so with if you were to purchase this book from dave on um, amazon you can quickly mm-hmm. read this it's really thin you can get into a place of an encounter for healing mm. because you have to deal with the trauma it's really real it's in your body it's in your soul it's you can't ignore it but the brilliant thing is, is that it's really possible to have that that removed. And there's a process to it that's simple, not uh, to be laborious. And just because it's simple doesn't mean it's ineffective. And so I okay. highly recommend you, you know, get this book and see it for the audience there. And, um, and, and then that will allow you the, the chains to be broken off and the warmth to come. And then I will email you your story, but this story, see the beautiful thing about books is that you can reread them and re-experience them. Oh, well, I imagine there's a lot of stuff I didn't catch in there. Sure. And what's great is, is that you can use this as an anchor, the story as an anchor for you to re- re-engage that raven. If you understand yeah. that raven is the form of Holy Spirit speaking to you, you can actually have a conversation that bridges off of this experience into your own imagination where you're literally having a time of encounter with him Mm -hmm. and he can speak to you again in fact you can do that with this together and have another encounter and here's the cool thing look look at the picture behind me right Mm -hmm. that's summer springtime right yeah. What if you were to re-engage and if you re- I'll email the story. I want you to just stand there. Look at the snow, look at the white dirt as you called it in the story and literally see the snow melt. Mm. And see the trees go from barren and have fully uh leaves on them. And see the garden mm-hmm. in the uh, next to the house blossom into the fruits. We we have a couple comments uh, Bob Chevalier says, I agree with my daughter, Rachel. Cool, cool. And the uh, reason I brought up flowers is that Rondi Sledge uh, gave some comments of some emoticons of flowers. So <laughs> what if you were to read this story later and just stand in that space, feel it, feel the cold, feel the, the bitterness, mm-hmm. the, the anger, the rage, 
and this and then see all the snow melt the sun come out and experience the spring coming maybe maybe that's what you saw as the beginning place because I, I didn't have that in the story when i wrote it mm. do, do you see how i'm helping you yeah what do you think yeah, about this um uh i i never even thought of it and that i know i needed to deal with this stuff but i didn't know that it was um uh, in my story, I guess, per se. Um, it's, uh, wow, that's just mind blowing. And uh, I'm sorry, that's okay. I'm still a little blown on this one. That's I'm okay. just, uh, that's because uh, I always long for spring. I always like new growth mm -hmm. and uh, the warmth. And uh, wow. And winter's my least favorite season of right. the year. <laughs> so imagine, uh, I just saw this. So imagine a father. Let's get the camera. This is the hand mm -hmm. of the father. Mm -hmm. well, imagine him putting his hand inside your chest. You know how like um, mm -hmm. when uh, they have open heart surgery and the the heart needs to be repumping again. They, they, they massage the muscles of the actual heart the doctors do. Mm. What if you have that experience where you're standing in the bitter cold winter in your imagination and you see it all melt away and you see the trees have leaves, you see the flowers come, but then imagine Father touching your heart. Yeah. Let him, and, and then you, you, you might, be aware there may be an emotional release there might be a deep trauma release just so you know be forewarned that may or may not happen but you would be in a safe place because you're in good hands your heart is in good mm. hands okay yeah so so i know i'm talking more than you are because you're you're overwhelmed and blown away and that's totally fine <laughs> i i respect you on that i'm i'm here to, to be like a, a helper for you um rachel says thank you so much jury overwhelmingly good great insights thank you thank you yeah um i appreciate everybody's comments if anybody has any questions or additional comments in the chat please please do chime in we do want to involve you as well um you know just so you know i i do have my book this is volume one uh, mm -hmm. I wrote this uh, with children's ministry and also with some other people, adults as well. Just because these stories are written for someone else does not mean that they're not useful to you in your own experience. And so these are 20 prophetic stories in here. There's also an audiobook version on Audible. And it's not just me reading. It's got music and sound design. It's totally immersive. These stories can really impact you, anybody. Uh, uh, to have an experience t for yourself, just like I'm describing for Mike here. Um, Gail says in the chat, these birds can be used as harbingers. Harbingers are forth telling, God's way of telling us the future. Seek out your possible future and take notes. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's good. Sometimes we've heard the word harbinger in a negative sense, like the doom and gloom. I like to think that you have a happy ending to your story. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Cool. Well, um, well, let me give you another opportunity. Is there anything else specifically in the story that you recall? Anything in your notes at all? Um, no, that was that's pretty much. I mean, it was it was a lot to take in. Uh, uh, imagine if I reread it, there'll be quite a bit more sure. uh, things that I would have come up mm -hmm. and have more notes. Uh, I was trying to listen a lot and uh, trying to do notes at the same time, but I wanted to pay attention to the story That's and cool. really keep my focus on what what you were you're reading. Cool. So. Great. Thank you, Mike. Well, I'm, I'm glad. Um... By the way, you know, what would you say to someone that uh, has never heard of prophetic storytelling? 
would you what would you tell them about you know how would you recommend them to get their own story like like how would you put that uh, i would tell them they need to do it because i mean that's like spot on uh i mean completely spot on um i wasn't expecting it to even be that spot on like but it's just really there um thank you it's uh it's neat being able to hear from God with a different perspective and not just the everyday mundane stuff. It's actually got a story behind it that gives you a different way of looking at it. Wow. Different, different perspective, I guess. Sure. Thank you so much, man. Wow. Um, if you are in the audience and you're watching right now and you want to get your own prophetic story, you can go to legendsofthewind.com and go to our store and look for the product called Become a Legend. Uh, it's also a link in the description below. And, um, you know, we are merging the creative arts with the prophetic. So uh, it is a business and we are creating something that is an experience. And this is not just church time of ministry. This is like the painting behind me. And uh, I'm, I'm so encouraged to see the people's hearts touched through our creative work. And we are looking to in, empower people and to open people's eyes. And uh, that's using our time and talent. So for any story that I do, it takes three hours for me to pull this off. It takes two hours for me to sit down, write the story, see the story, edit the story, and then an hour for the show. So... Michael, I want to thank you very much for your time and for me to bless you with this story. No, thank you. That was amazing. Great. Um, Bob Chev oh, Karen, uh, Karen here says, a horse whisperer understands the way, um, understands the horse's ways and speaks to it in its own language. They don't use, use harsh training or pain to the horse. Thank you very much, Karen. That's really nice. <laughs> right. And so I think that, that the raven for you is a similar uh, way of hearing. and He's not going to try to control and manipulate. And I want to affirm you about your sense of justice. I have a, a sense of justice in my heart as well. And I get really pissed off too when crap happens and when people are treating me badly or I see other people being treated badly. I want to make sure mm -hmm. that things are done well, done right, and I want to make sure that people treat me right because I don't like it when I get yelled at uh, for things that are not justified. And so I, because of that sense of justice, it can be a, a tripping up thing for me and I get offended. I can get bitter. God gave me that part of my personality, but I have to go to him to address it. And sometimes I have to forgive the person who yelled at me, or I need to see, God, is there something I'm missing here? And also, typically I'm the first person to apologize. And so I will go and make amends, even though the other person may never apologize. Now, I'm not saying to be a doormat either, I'm looking to, for me, for God to be, uh, for my heart to be flexible in his hand. And I just say these things to you as well because I want to help give you a pathway to, to, to properly manage the heart of justice. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. But it's funny you say that because uh, they always joke, all oh, family members joke, say I would have made a good cop. Because <laughs> um, um, very much about somebody not wronging other people, mm. um, including myself. Um, yes, and I, I, you know, I, I get tripped up by politics because I watch a lot of stuff that's going wrong, and mm -hmm. um, and I probably shouldn't pay attention to it as much as yes. I do. Um, but I get it makes me that helps cause me to get a little better too. Um, right. Now, in light of that, uh, Michael, so if you can reframe your imagination, not in the arts, but in relationships, if you can see yourself in the future, or if you can see that other person in the future, where God's giving you a picture of what that looks like, then you mm -hmm. can head in that direction. 
Okay. So like this so it's almost like the, the, the example I gave you for the experience of having the snow turning into spring. Spring, like the picture behind me, is your destination. But mm-hmm. you're you're right now in the middle of the winter. But God's saying this is the way through it. Not around it, but through it. So if you look at a person or in a relationship that's in currently in trouble, currently in conflict, currently in strife, ask the raven, the Keros of time, to show you a picture of what that relationship or that person looks like in the future. Give, have him give you that image. And then ask for the way to that place in that relationship. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. And that's the pathway for you. Yeah, I can see that. Cool. Very cool. Well, guys, if there's any more comments, this is your opportunity. Um, you know, I want you guys to know is that um, I care about the people I write for and I care about my audience and uh, everything that I create here has literally been born out of seasons and times of crushing. Part of my story and part of Mike's story are similar in a certain way. And so uh, years ago, I was received an email from Prophet Kim Clement. And he talked about that um, the, the anointing oil is created from bitter and sweet spices. And they're put into the mixture of the oil, and then they're pounded and pounded and pounded and crushed in order to create the anointing. And so for, for Michael and myself, both of us have been crushed. Both of us have been pounded and pounded. And so the whole point is to have that be put to use for the good, to help others to be anointing for other people for the benefit of someone else. And so I want to thank you, Mike, for allowing me to do that for you, also for Rachel and your family watching. Also, next week on Monday is Rachel's turn. So I'm looking forward to getting the, her story for that time. Um, and she even just commented, my people perish for lack of vision. Great way to explain that. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. Cool, Mike. Thanks, man. I think this is a thank good you. show. It's a good show, huh? Yeah, it was awesome. Fantastic. Um, well, you stick around here. I'm going to have a debrief with you. But okay. guys, everybody in the audience, thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of Michael's story and for uh, having him going from a season of winter bitter coldness into the time of spring and, 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 and restoration for him and also for his finances and also for his relationships. So guys, thanks so much. Michael, thank you. Thank you. Okay, cool. Well, we'll see you next Monday. All right. Have a good show. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you.